It's Monday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Mariam. Hi. How are you? We're good. We're getting ready for school. Yeah, so just about I'm a week away. We're getting ready for school. <laughs> <laughs> After, mm. What have you done so far? Um, well, we were just getting, you know, uniforms are small and things like that. Oh, so yeah. we we'll definitely yeah, need this to week, get that's uniforms. What I'm doing. All our clothes, you know when we They're shopped in December? Yes. We did not wear the clothes throughout the year. <laughs> now all the clothes that jump up, the kids have grown so tall. Yeah. So you know, we just, need to I get just ready. realized that I didn't think of that, <laughs> that the uniform might not work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we tried ours over the weekend and, and we realized that um, need our son needs new shorts. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going this week oh, to go and get some. So you should join me because now our own will just be perfect fit. I've always bought oversized. Ah. The way our mothers do it. I don't yes. like it, Mima. You'll oh. see them. The children will not be like they are, they are swimming. I, I remember in the I picked outfit. shorts for him and the um, Yaolu was complaining. But it will be due. But now it's just perfect fit. It's just the shorts. One now. of the things I've also done is start going to bed at nine because that's usually at the bedtime. Okay. Um, nine now, I start waking up at the right time for. So oh, wake up yeah. at six. So we're ready. So oh. your body starts getting adjusted to the new time yeah, because I think they're so used I need to sleeping. Now. Anyhow, they just sleep anytime and yeah. all that. So thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten the routine. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm fine though, you know now. Birthday so we had birthday shout outs, but I have to mention that I was given an award. A recognition. Oh, oh yes. ah, you didn't tell us. Didn't so say. the people in Badagri exist have okay. a. I, I, I forgot to bring the letter because I needed to memorize everything. Mm. I read through it over the weekend and I thought back to my days on your view, always talking about the area and the changes that have happened. And then some people sat somewhere and thought, you know, we should oh. recognize you. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's 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 so yeah. so they've been commemorating six months of the bomb blast that happened at Abulia, at Adusoba, mm. and they want me to attend. That's where they'll be having it, and then there'll be a recognition of my contributions oh. to the development. Mm. So thank you. You have very contributed. Much. You, you have that. your <laughs> voice. <laughs> we, we know you that. Have. Use your voice. <laughs> yeah, thank you use you. your voice. I, 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 actually, I, I needed it. I needed it at the time when I saw it. So, I, Mrs. Muinat okay. <laughs> Ajibike Olalekon, her daughter Moroti, sent this shout out to her. Today is her birthday. We also have a birthday shout out from for um, Edu, 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 I know Edu family in Ekpe, Edu Muidin Farida Ajoke. Today is her birthday. Happy her birthday. Mom sends her happy birthday shout out. Happy birthday to Elizabeth. Like my birthday daughter's. Birthday. Yes. Yes. Nice yeah. nice my daughter's friend Elizabeth at home today is her birthday as well. Happy uh, birthday, Aisha. Elizabeth. Happy Aisha. Aisha. And our Aisha. receptionist, Oneme. Oh, happy Lord. birthday as well. Happy birthday. Nima, we I have them plenty. I remember the next one. Nima, please, he's now okay, getting. Okay, we're happy that you are speaking on our behalf. So please, yes, please, please. happy birthday, happy birthday to everybody. To yes. Many more years. <laughs> so where, how was your weekend? It was busy. Um, uh, the entire family went to Bumosho. Oh, and you know, we keep hearing, you know, the kids do this thing all the time. So maybe children don't travel long distance. Are we there? We there yet. One hour. Mm. I thought that was a five hour journey. I thought it would be like four hours. Apparently I was forecasting. You know when they say you speak it and then it comes mm. to life. Mm. Mm. And it took you that long. So it was, coming back was even worse. And we, 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 we just need to speed up the road challenge between redeem and come in here because there's so much congestion but there's work going on there's there's work going on I, I i don't want to complain about the pace or anything but it's just that the volume of traffic coming into that axis is a whole lot Mariah. we spent about um two hours getting to that redeem point and we spent two hours between redeem and getting Bega. to and getting to oh. bega that's a 10 minutes journey mm -hmm. it, no it was actually a 40 minutes journey no that's a 10 minutes journey normally. Normally. yeah normal it would have been a 10 minutes journey mm -hmm. but even with all traffic it would have been 40 minutes it took two hours and it was just moving 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 mm -hmm. and, it, it and was, with the children in the car yeah. it's just a phase don't worry but i can't wait for us to just yeah, yeah. Finish. Just up because that. i might be yeah. visiting my father again yeah. so 
It should please. All right. It is well. well. Me, the weekend, I mean, I, usually, I didn't have my live on, on Sunday because my kids have been in and out mm. of the hospital over the weekend. Yeah. And this Thursday we'll be managing them. But thank God everybody's well now. We're good to go. You should get it all over, over with before school. school because mm. I said, oh, this is your drama, eh? School is starting Monday, please. Everybody wants to fall. It is the time for you to fall and let you get well. So that's I forgot to send God's that grace next week. I'll send it. Let's go on a break now. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Hard knocks for Basanjo over attack on Buhari government. Um, birth in integrity, the enduring legacy of Captain Hosa. I read that editorial. Very interesting. Is a Yamu rattles a Baseki on performance? <laughs> Health workers begin strike. NBA to lawyers ignore Malami on stamp fees. And gunmen kidnap 16 on Kaduna uh, Road. Okay, so which story are we taking there? Okay. Let's, let's, let's the is it Yamu? Which one? No, I want to say the MBA, the MBA yes. So, NBA, yes, go ahead. Please. So the Attorney General has singularly you know, amended the rules of professional conduct that you know regulates us lawyers and taking out certain fees that you know were not, were not comfortable, they are revenue generation for the MBA. So the MBA have called mm -hmm. that we should all sideline the um, uh, Attorney General's um, amendments and you know not look at it. But I, I read through the story and I think certain areas of those things should be amended, except that the foundation is, 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 is warped already. There, there's a body that must, he cannot single-handedly, all Attorney General's past of the state along with him and about 12 members of the MBA right. must partake in that amendment and he could not you know, single-handedly have done it for that alone. I think, but right. the amendments are good. So, yeah, so our former president is under all sorts of attack because mm -hmm. <laughs> during a dialogue, a consultative dialogue, he said that Nigeria is fast drifting into a failed and badly divided state. And of course, the federal government. Well, that's Obasanjo. AP, yeah, that's Obasanjo, mm -hmm. sorry. And APC stalwarts, you know, are like, <laughs> Oga, well, well, we are moving that. from. Let me, let me okay. add to what he said. I'm not saying that, that we're filled stick. Now, said Nigeria is a basket case, yeah. and we need to be pulled out before we fall over the brink. Mm -hmm. Now, so, so now they responded. What did they say? Yes, yeah, so, well, it's just d different responses, which is, okay, particularly they said he's moving from the lofty height of commander in chief to the lowly level of divider in chief. <laughs> I mean, I under we should understand that there will be criticism. Things are not going well, whether we like it or not. And we're not saying it's all the um, fault of this particular administration. Yes, we've had issues for many years, but it's okay for someone to be able to point out those yeah. things and then we can go have a dialogue back yeah. and forth. I, I, Thank I, you for I taking like us. that the president, the president now, not himself. the spokesperson yeah. himself, should you know disguise like one of the governors in the past used to do, and go around the country. Hmm. And, you know, let just, and just feel the pulse of the people so that you know whether they are deceiving you, criticizing you unjustly or not. I like, Don't read from the pages of the papers. I like to link that to Daily Trust. We can go into Daily Trust now because uh, the major headline, just, like, just to connect what um, Mariam just said, only dialogue can solve Nigeria's yeah. challenges. Um, and uh, Obasanjo is Nigeria's divider in chief, says presidency. Health workers begin nationwide strike. And uh, that, the, the story I was going to take that was from the Nigerian Working Group on Peace Building. It's a group of um, the Nigerians who are part of this group. And they, they, I think their own approach was a bit more civil. Mm -hmm. You know, they said that we need dialogue. We need the, the, the fact that um, Nigeria, there's a distrust between the people and the government. Mm -hmm. And there has to be some kind of conversation where we can bring back that trust. And that we need uh, police reform. We need uh, the replacement of the security chiefs and all that. So they, 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 like, they itemized various things they felt the government must do to help us begin to get some real change. And I thought that was a bit better than the mudslinging that we got from <laughs> the two leaders. Okay, let's move on to another paper, Vanguard. Uh, will fight hike in price of fuel, electricity tariff, labor insists. At those 2020 debates, my predecessor borrowed rec recklessly, says Obaseki. Obaseki's only achievement is security vote increment, says Eze Yamu. FG goes tough on discos, on level discos, over settlement of the 173 billionaire debt. Um, health workers begin nationwide strike today, says federal government. Bandits abduct 16 on way to farm in Kaduna village. And practicing fees seal, NBA asks lawyers to ignore Malami's order. Okay, which story are we taking? So the 1.47 trillion naira used to maintain the refineries over five years. 
and this report is very, very depressing for me. We've spent this amount of money, yet we have ineffective and moribund uh, or dead um, refineries to show for it. If imagine if we had working refineries and then there was this de uh, regulation, it would make Nigerians, you know, believe in this government. You delayed this far, paid what you called under recovery, and then you finally removed subsidy, which we all agree should be removed anyway. Mm -hmm. And then you left us to ourselves. Mm. You left a problem. You didn't solve the problem in five years. Yeah, so Johesu is saying that they are going on strike. Or oh, they started it at midnight uh, on Sunday. And um, this is because the conciliatory meeting that they had had with the, uh, with the federal government, um, represented, which was represented by the minister, um, Dr. Chris Ngike, according to them, they do not think that it was leading anywhere. Most of their demands did not seem like it was going to be met anyway. But the federal government is saying, well, if you are in the process of addressing something, to go on a strike is like I'm twisting the government, it's illegal. And so, I guess. And the government keeps insisting that they've actually met most of most their demands. Of their demands. So no, well, no, no, Johesu. They met that of the resident so doctors. Johesu, okay. Yeah, so Johesu and the res uh, resident doctors were doing it together. Yeah, but well, now it seems like the doctors have gotten. They are answering, gotten, they are answering the, the doctors, doctors, but not Johesu. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to the punch. Failed state, I think we talk about that. Presidency ACF attack of Basso Joe as Ohanezi a very, very defend ex president. Let's find a human history story. Headsman Rob Ogunfama raped 16 year old daughter. Oh. Palm wine seller beats up policewoman over missing 150,000 naira. Confusion trails drowning of two Lagos residents in flood. And we are probing viral video of Shisha uh, smoking cup, says police. And uh, one last story. Top 10 exporters earned $74.78 .78 million in one month, says federal government. Right. So the Shisha so. smoking police officer, you know, there's a viral video, you know, of this police officer taking in smoke and, take ex you know, exhaling mm -hmm. smoke that worried all of us. And the police have started, you know, come out to say that they are investigating, trying to look through that video to find out because this does not represent yes. the image of the Nigerian police. And I think that, you know, that's the way to go. Yeah. I think that's, we've seen how that um, citizen journalism has helped us so far. Mm. So these, these are the videos, but send it to the right quarters. You don't always have to let it just go out. Mm. Let people know mm. that you're trying to solve a problem, mm -hmm. not make it worse. Let's find another story. Uh, yes. So there's this sad story of two children allegedly drowned in um, Ketu, here. In Ketu area uh, in the canal. So the story is... Uh, there are some residents who are saying, or eyewitnesses, some people say it's a, an adult and a child, some people say it's two young ladies who were trying to cross the canal, you know, and Lasema has been there, you know, trying to find, to find that there's been a you know, search and rescue effort, but nothing yet, they, and there's <coughs> no one who's come forward to say they're, they've lost or they're looking for any family members just as yet. But also Lasema is advising Nigerians, please stop putting your waste and your... Um, whatever into these canals, mm. they block them, and this right. is what it causes. Linking that to the humanitarian, it's, it's also the flooding story. There are mm -hmm. still 28 states that are going to be on the watch list right now. 28 states. The statement said that about 104 local governments already have experienced heavy rainfall, mm. while 275 other local governments in 36 mm. states, including the Federal Capital Territory, will experience moderate rainfall. And um, the Minister Hajia Farouk for Disaster Management and Social Development says that heart goes out to people living in Kebi, Bauchi, um, Jigawa, state about the recent flooding. We saw the videos of cartels that were like hmm. barely floating all it's through. And really, really sad. There's no, there's, there's no, I'm, I'm looking for the solution. It's just, it's what, are we, what are we but going we to do? do? This you just give us, yeah, yeah. That's what we there's say. nothing we're going to do. Yeah. You're not telling the farmers, this is where you can move to, mm -hmm. your, your cattle to. You're not telling people what you can do. But it's as it's said, just the same, same as thing. As Dima said, this is an annual thing. It happens yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. So people need to begin to plan. Even, I mean, everywhere in the there are natural disasters that people plan. just somewhat just plan and know that, okay, well, this is Did you happening. see the small rain that happened over the weekend? This, that small rain? Yes, no. I could not drive through my normal. I had to go and find an alternative. Okay, let's move on to Daily Sun very quickly. Buhari hits Sabasanja hard. I think we talked about that already. Mm -hmm. Flood in 28 states in danger. We just mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, fuel price, electricity tariff hike, NLC, and you see meet ahead of planned nationwide protests. Uzodima Okorocha fight over new varsity. Edo Guba won't be inclusive. Election assures night inconclusive. I mean, okay. I think <laughs> Edo Guba won't be inconclusive. Election assures INEC. The debate yesterday, we watched the debate yeah. yesterday. Um, and we'll be talking a bit about the door in a, in a moment. Uh, but uh, any other story in Sun? There's a story I don't want us to miss because we're running out of time. Navdak. So Navdak is clamping down on such sachets, pets are called um, sachets mm -hmm. that they would no longer register 
new ones because they realize that alcohol is very, th these small sachets are deceptively everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it is a psychoactive substance and it's dependency producing. And we should all remember that alcohol is bad for our system, even if they mm -hmm. sell it under the guise that it does other things. So anything that is in that small sachet is not getting registered anymore. Can I would want us to take it further. Can we, we get an alternative to the sachet water too? Because we're so talking flogged and clogged uh, canals and it's a major contributor to yeah. it. That's right. Mm. Okay, that's a, that's a good that's a, point. That'll be a measure between um, environment and this Finally, one. Finally, our, our last paper, we can't take it, but it's important for us to mm. make the mention of the fact, uh, I think it's this day, uh, the change of baton, we should celebrate when some women are doing great. New Assistant Controller General of Nigerian Immigration Service Zone A, Ms. Dora Brimer, left uh, with the outgoing ACG, Mr. Mohamed Alpha, during the ceremony um, in Lagos, Ikeja, yesterday. Congratulations to her. Well done. She's the, mm -hmm. she's the now the woman head woman in charge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll just speak briefly on the Lagos school resumption. There's been a bit of confusion. One second, yeah. they're opening. The next second, they're not opening. We saw the press release over the weekend. We want to confirm exactly what's going on. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So I had a resumption of activities in both public and primary schools. The Lagos State has announced a new academic structure adopted in the state after the lockdown caused by the outbreak of COVID-19. Joining us now on the show is the Commissioner for Education in Lagos State, Mrs. Folashadi Adefisa. Good morning, madam. Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Good morning. Thank yes. you for having me. Good to have you. So in the last few weeks, there's been a bit of confusion. Uh, one moment the government said September 21st schools can open, so people started preparing. And then last week we're, we also heard that schools are not allowed to open again from 21st of September. What exactly is the status right now? Could you tell us where we are? Oh, thank you once again. Uh, we brought out a press release on Sunday morning, and that was quite clear. There are discussions with the governor, a discussion with various stakeholders, and we agreed that uh, schools can start on the 21st. For public schools, we, we made it a bit different for public and private schools for obvious reasons. Because in public schools, we do have to manage uh, social distancing much more critically than they do in uh, private schools. So for private schools, we said they could resume on the 21st. But like, and public schools would resume on 21st as well. But in phases, we are opening our public schools in phases. Over the next few weeks, gradually, gently building up until the school is full. And so we also advise private schools, uh, who have some of whom have, don't have the same issues of social distance that we would have. Uh, we've asked them to please think through as well and uh, open in phases as well. But from the 21st, they can open, and we are not prescribing the phases, but we are advising and recommending that they open in phases. And also, you know, uh, institute various strategies for managing the virus, such as staggered resumption in the morning, online lessons, so that the online lessons can continue. Right. Students don't have to come to school. Right. I think it's something we've all learned. Okay. So I think it's clearer now. Right. Thank you. Okay, Ma, since the announcement, a lot of private schools are starting to make arrangements about resuming. But, you know, my fear is that. Once there's no regulation as to them meeting the standards for the, under the pandemic for resumption, they might, after a while, relax these terms and you know, start to break the rules. How are you people going to go about regulating, visiting schools, you know, um, you know um, uh, sure. to, to make sure that you know, they're conforming? There are, the, the rules are there because, you know, before we opened, we did have uh, the COVID, uh, the COVID um, protocols for resumption. And the COVID protocols for resumption still stand. And we have our Office of Education Quality Assurance that is going around monitoring schools. In addition, there's a platform on which we expect them to register and tell us their plans for ensuring social distance and all other COVID protocols. These will be followed up by physical visits to schools. So schools are not, it's not a laissez faire, go ahead and do whatever you want thing. It's just saying that. Open your schools in strict compliance with COVID uh, guidelines. Yes, um, Madam Commissioner, people would. Um, what are the what are the specific plans for boarding schools? Now, for for boarding schools, 
many of the boarding schools that we've discussed with have come up and agreed that possibly they'll have more built. Some are not even opening at all, not opening their boarding house if they cannot guarantee social distance. So the, each, each school is unique, and that's the message we are sending out. And the discussions we are, we cannot be just telling you the discussions we are having in the public space, but we are having one-on-one -on -one discussions with a lot of uh, boarding schools, especially how are you going to manage during this pandemic, yeah. uh, during this uh, period. Mm -hmm. What is the plan for government public schools, though? For government public schools, we are opening gently again, like we said. Yes, okay. But we are considering a lot of options. We are only opening for GS3 and uh, SS2 right now. Okay. Okay. So and, and that should ensure enough uh, distance. Okay, so I, I know that you're not in the medical field, but I'm sure you've had enough information based on your interactions and all the meetings that have been done together. Mm -hmm. um, what assurance can you give parents who feel that, or, or grandparents whose children are going into, um, into schools now, who are resuming schools, and they know that they are old and they should be careful? What would you advise they do? How can we all better protect ourselves and prepare our children ahead of this? I think we should still obey all the COVID rules. It, this, the pandemic is there. It has not gone. And in many countries, we know when they open, there is a spike. And that is why we have done it slowly and methodically. So that we, you, see, you know that the ASS3s were in school for how many weeks now? For about a month yeah. until Saturday. And we watched and we saw that it had no impact. So that's why we are opening schools gradually. Okay. So all I can tell parents is, retain the rules and still keep children away from elderly grandparents if you can do so. But otherwise, consistent washing of hands, wearing of masks, maintaining social distance, uh, no hugging and, and, and so on. These rules must still continue to right. be applied. That's, because it's not That's where my concern is. Um, yeah. We know the age range of children, right, those in nursery, cannot, they, in fact, they, they shouldn't wear face masks because of the risk of suffocation, and they, should, they cannot even obey some of these rules of social distance in their kids. Uh, is there any plan to, to separate this, or in fact, leave them at home completely okay. and focus on those children that can be, can be controlled? It's no, private schools, I'm not talking of public schools now. I'm to, focusing no, we on are private very schools. clear. No pre-primary school should open, no nursery, no kindergarten. Yeah none of them should open. In the, we don't think they can manage the laws of social distance, mm -hmm. and we need to protect them and their teachers as well. So they are not opening. This is just for primary schools, primary one up okay. only. Right. Yeah, so um, yes. some parents are saying that over the uh, lockdown, their children mm -hmm. did like proper school online. What does yes. that mean for them now in September? Are they going to new classes? And then some parents say, we didn't do any classes during that time. What would that mean for our children? Is there a conversation that you've had with the schools? Yes, you see, um, what we've decided to do, and we keep on talking to the association, is this. Uh, when the students come in, we will start, because we know no matter what we do did in government, we know that there are some children who did not take part. And we've done surveys and so on to find out how many children who actually took part in uh, the distance learning methods that we had, radio, TV, online, and so on. And we found that really about 70% of them in some places, up to 90 in some. But there were others who were left. So we know that we are going to come in with uh, a varied classroom. So one of the first things we are going to do is revision. We are just going to revise and try and bring them up to speed okay. before then have a, uh, a, a baseline assessment so that we know where they are. And in government we are deliberately setting up uh, learning support uh, department so that children, those who are really, really not doing well at all will have a chance to be taught, ex to be given extra classes. So that we are... So that, is, we are just, that is what schools go to do right. when they resume. So that we are very clear. So the private mm -hmm. schools are allowed to resume from 21st. Yes. Public schools are not opening yet, but they're opening gradually, except for GSS3 and SS1 students who are going to be coming in and it's going to be phased, correct? We, uh, yeah, the, the, we have to, yeah, yeah, okay. The way you summarize it is fair enough. <laughs> okay, but the final question, madam, is the fact that... But, but can I add that private schools, I would like to add that private schools can open from the 21st, but we have encouraged, we encourage and advise them to open in phases as well. And they must comply with COVID guidelines. That means we will go to, if a school thinks that they can open fully, They've got to convince us that uh, uh, our uh, Office of Quality Assurance 
will, of course, be able to assess and... Okay, so my question to you, madam, is as a parent, I might get worried that if my children's school are not complying, is there mm -hmm. somewhere I can report to it? I exactly. feel that there, there have been lax in these guidelines. Can I come to the, the, to the ministry to complain? Ah, of course, throughout the guidelines, throughout, throughout the lockdown, and in a lot of instances, a lot of parents were engaging with us. So our lines, our lines are on the open forum. There is a website, uh, the Office of Quality, Education Quality Assurance has a webpage on the Lagos State uh, website, and people can come, people come physically. So there are various ways by which you can engage us to let us know your concerns as parents. Okay. And we are quite open and we do attend to every case. Okay, um, this office you mentioned, did they certify all the schools that are now opening? Is there like a certificate as a parent can say, yes. have you been visited by Lagos State and you are certified mm. allowed to open? Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They are going around. Because like I said, the portal, they, first of all, there was training. Then they register on the portal and tell us their plans. Then we will take those plans to the school. Okay, fantastic. And right. uh, monitor and see that it's in keeping with the COVID guidelines and the uh, children will be safe. I think all we keep saying is, please let us err on the side of safety. Safety, mm. safety, safety. Mm. Okay. I think we have some clarity now. Thank you very much, Madam, for joining us this morning. We've been Thank you for calling. We've been speaking no. with the Commissioner for Education, Lagos State, Mrs. Falasha Diadipisa. Let's go on a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. I'm still afraid mm. because my school, they had a PTA meeting two weeks ago. I refused to attend. They sent the, break, the memo, the, what they had decided, what they've reached, I, and sent, you know, how the children are supposed to resume and the classes that are supposed to resume. I'm still not relying on that. The staggered resumption the, and the alter, alternate days resumption for primary school students is something I'm still afraid of. Now, you can have a child whose friend is in another class and that child will continue to jump up and down school. <laughs> washing, hand washing is something that should be accessible. There was a problem in one of the classes that I thought my son was in. The sink was too high for them. So most children will not yes, even complain. Some children resume because so, it's you know, no, he's not, certainly not. <laughs> but I'm just it's saying such examples yeah. might be abound yeah. in other schools. So these are things that, you know, the school should conform but with. Also, there was a you question. You'd be surprised how very aware these children are. I think I told you guys when I took my daughter out and how serious she was, just as paranoid as I was about keeping her social distance. Your daughter is like you. Yeah, and you I were guess very so. careful. But what I'm trying to say is that no, also our, our children are paying attention to yeah, what is happening so around us. So the young girl, she was her first time. Mm. When you go out in Lagos and you see every, do everybody is relaxed. And adults are doing that. Yeah. No, do, once you, and you see it consistently, the children will start to relax. Come to talk about it. are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thanks for calling. Good Go morning. ahead, please. Morning. Yeah, good morning to everyone. Morning. Yeah, and um, I'm a first time caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Okay, now, why I, I need to call? I've been trying to call for some time, but I, I have not been able to get to, but I'm happy that I'm able to get to the day. <laughs> it's um, regarding the resumption, and um, I think I heard um, the commissioner say, she, she mentioned something about um, they have task force or something, but I would um, implore the parents themselves to be their own task force because we can really rely on, sorry to say, the task force because the parents should be the ones to ensure that school comply with COVID-19 guidelines. It's very important. If they know that the school are not complying, it's better to let their children sit at home instead of yeah. relying on those task force. Exactly. You know how Thank you, Akwe. So Akwe is saying that parents should be vigilant mm -hmm. and see and observe and, and, and report it where, where you need to. Yes, there, there's something that totally skipped me, and then I'm saying it from Honorable Ademola Lalade on Twitter concerning um, our teachers. How do we protect our teachers? Mm. Because um, yeah. people, some, some protest was in other developed countries that when we think of school resuming, we should also we think, think that teachers' lives are also in danger. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and that's that are true. there going to be PPEs for public school teachers? How are oh. they going to protect themselves? Well, I'll just say if you're a teacher, just observe all social. Mm. 
mm. um, or COVID. I think teachers are even more safe because you, you're teaching from a, a, from distance. a distance. It's the kids that the, the real danger is with the children coming, coming to each other. So they, 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 they have be. your face mask okay. or you have your shield and you, you, you speak to the kids. So you are still somewhat distance from the, the kids. The fear will be right. the teachers are older, so mm. they are more at risk than yeah, children. But they are not in their faces. They're not in the children's faces. No. So I think I, I'm more concerned about the kids passing it from each other to then to their parents at home. There was a conversation with my neighbor and she was like, a teacher in face mask will be scary to children. Oh, come on, every child and is she, <laughs> she, she would protest. New face normal, mask. everybody and I was knows thinking that. To face, her mask. That. face mask is normal. She be is, if the children don't know, the teacher will say, see, I am the one I put it back on. Because <laughs> I know you. there's a one on one session in my mm. daughter's school, for instance, after they're done with the general right. session, every subject is taking one on one per child. Mm. And the teacher must do that. And that has really been helpful. If they take it out, mm. I really Let me take Ayani. Ayani, are you there? Thanks for calling. Yeah, good morning. Morning, That's go ahead, right. please. A good morning to your co panelists. Yes. Yeah, uh, the, I want to talk concerning the monitoring yes. of a, a, a legal sector government. Mm. What, uh, what about the all those mushroom uh, private schools? Public private schools. Thanks. Public, yes, that doesn't Thanks. really have a name. How do they, how are they yeah. going to monitor them so. so that they can comply with these uh, COVID 19 uh, rules? And secondly, why can't Lagos mm. State adopt a good state system? Of uh, allowing maybe yes, uh, yes, yes, students in the morning and SS in the evening. I think that would be better because we don't really understand this the system of uh, yes two and uh, I mean yes three and SS two students. The opening. I think so it's perfect. We don't really you know what, to uh, increments in salaries so for the teachers. Do something about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I think from, from my own understanding, mm. I know that they they have teams, especially in the remote the remotest area in Lagos State. That's usually where they start from before they could bring it to the major cities. So they have teams monitoring in those areas. And interestingly, those guys there, from the reports, some of the reports I have seen, they actually able to comply more than those of us in the, in, in the cities. They are more, they are more so, conscious mm -hmm. of this. So, but, but that's on one end. The, the Ogun State um, um, system. system, I'm not sure about, but what Lagos State is telling us is that the GSS-3 who are supposed to be going into SS1 mm -hmm. are allowed to resume. They're going to start with that re revision. Mm -hmm. And then the SS2 moving on to SS3 are also going to come in for now. Mm -hmm. That phase that staggered learning will come in in due course. They haven't told us exactly when they're going to start, but they will inform us when they're mm -hmm. starting for other classes. Um, but for private schools, who they believe might be more structured, more organized, are allowed to start. Our own worry, however, is that ensure that your monitors, your monitoring agent groups are going around to ensure that these private schools are actually adhering mm. to the guidelines. Because if they don't, then who, 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 uh, what, what's going to be um, yeah. to our children? In, in answer to the public-private schools, so, so this is where the parents, when they say the parents have to come in, this is where you have to come in. Because you know the sort of school that you're putting your child, that your child will be going to, and there might not be enough enforcement or s anyone yes. to do the monitoring, yes. you have to be the monitor right, right. to make sure that your child is safe. Yeah. Okay, I think we are wrap up on that. Uh, let's go on a break now. When we come back, we we'll discuss Edo election. Stay with us. We'll be <laughs> right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So, many of us watched the debate uh, yesterday. Gov uh, Governor Baseki and... Uh, Governor Chief Candidate for APC, Pastor Izeyamu, yesterday on a news station where both of them went head to head. It was interesting. But as the Edo State is gearing up now for Saturday's governorship election to discuss more of the burning issues surrounding the forthcoming poll, we're going to be having Collins Okonofua representing Pastor Osage Izeyamu Campaign Council. We'll also be having the special advisor to the Governor, governor Baseki uh, on political matters, Osai Bobo Iyoha. Welcome, gentlemen, to the show. Good to have you both. Thank you. So we watched Thank the debate yesterday from the horse's mouth, and um, it was interesting to see both parties go head to head and all of that. Um, but this, the, the elections are this weekend, and before I start asking and discussing issues, I'd like to get your response to um, the Obama's intervention um, um, concerning campaigning and all that. Have you seen d a difference in the outburst within the community since the Obama spoke, or? Have there been pockets of violence here and there? Could you just, on both sides, let me start with Mr. Collins, in your, in your view. Okay, Pastor Collins is my name, thank you. Um, since the Obas intervention, um, I, I think that there's been um, a gradual reduction in violence 
Um, that's because the Oba pointedly uh, spoke to the people involved and um, reminded them of their promises to him to ensure that this election um, be violence free. And uh, since then, I think the people have taken heed to the Oba's um, counsel. And we can see that um, since that intervention, the, the tension has um, uh, basically reduced. Right. Uh, the Oba specifically told the people, the direct people calling their names and telling them, call your boys to order. And indeed, we believe that uh, they have done that and we have seen a gradual redu reduction All of right. tension. I'll take your response for that. Let's move on to the other topic. Go ahead. Okay, yes. So for me, um, definitely human, the human interest angle is important to me. I just wanted to also ask um, um, Honorable Iyoha what he thinks if he's satisfied with what the governor is doing in preparation for this as for security for the people. So apart from the others' um, um, intervention. intervention, what are we, um, um, police officers, what exactly is the federal government and the Edo State governor doing to make sure that people will be safe during this election? Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, for us, um, as the government, uh, our government is doing its job, which is the uh, best job is to protect lives and property of Edo people. And um, we want to thank the uh, Monopan Edo, Kwa Kola Kola, who is our royal father, a very revered traditional ruler across the world, not only in this country. That uh, he called all the principal actors to talk to them on the need for peace. For us, it has never been, it's not in our DNA to. Uh, Push, for, push violence and all that. But at the same time, we all know, we could even see from yesterday's debate, that uh, there are some bad bruisers and all that. So they tend to take things way above what is supposed to be. But we calm all the tension after the debate because, you know, right. there's no need for all those things. All those are kind of temperature. We are, we are all edu people. So okay. it's never been a bad violence. Good. So let's go into the issues that were discussed. Uh, one of the things that were raised yesterday was this issue of his certificate, your, uh, the governor's certificate not being eligible, um, according to uh, what uh, Pastor Ezio Yamu said. Uh, he, doesn't have, he didn't have a certificate from University of Ibadan. And the governor didn't really clarify this for us. Could you help us in that regard? I don't know what you mean by the governor didn't clarify it. You understand? Because the certificate is a no issue. The thing the governor said, number one, was how can a man that does, that does not even have primary six, talk less of uh, secondary school, or not to talk of even university, be the person that will sit and legislate over somebody's certificate? But let's keep that aside. You heard the governor say yesterday that when he left secondary school in 1976, there was no jam. You understand? Even today, there are various ways of getting to Nigerian universities. Apart from JAM, there was this IGMB that used to exist in the mm -hmm. 90s, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's there. Okay? There was a preliminary. I went into the university via preliminaries. That's what we used to call it then in uh, Bender State University. So the issue of his certificate doesn't arise because, number one, he did not get great people self admission. The admission was given to him by the University of Ibada. Do not forget. And then when we were writing JAM in those days, I don't know whether they are still, still available now. There used to be, when you buy your jam form, there's what they call syllables that they sell. It tells you what you need, the prerequisites for you to gain admission. And I still, I saw that document recently where it stated what you need to go into University of Ibadan as at that time when you write the A-levels or your O-levels. They were, they, they've been there all these years. I don't know who, okay. whether those things are still available, what you call the syllable. Mm -hmm. So for us, the certificate was not an issue. Right. They walked from the answer to the question because they knew the governor was too popular, and so they were looking for a way to to uh, to, okay. to, to disqualify. Right. Can forget, I say something Ibadan. briefly about that, please? Can I say something briefly about that, please? The university of Ibadan came like out twice. I would like to say something right. briefly about that. They took a full, full page advert. Mm -hmm. Even the alumni of the university, the alumni association, who were classmates because the university also took a full page advertorial, okay. stating that. The same, they went to the same school. His right. classmate in the hostel also took a full page. Point so taken. not about. Okay. Point taken. Can I say sir. something briefly about that? Pastor Collins wanted to say something. Hang in there. Uh, yes, Mr. Osai. Go yes, ahead. Yes, please. 
I, I, I also I also happen to have graduated from secondary school in 1976. All right, and I know that there were only two ways by which you could get admission into university. You either would get admission into university um, um, through um, uh, prelim or through direct entry, through direct entry, which would mean that you had um, A levels uh, papers in, uh, you had A levels in two papers, none of which Obaseki has produced. He had three credits in WAEC, and those three credits were minus English and mathematics, which were composite subjects even as at that time. Obaseki did not have it. Now, okay. if you were going Point to start the agenda process, you needed to produce your A-level papers. Hmm. Obaseki claims that he has A-levels. Up until now, yes. as you and I speak, nobody has cited those A-level papers. Okay. And Obaseki will have to face the court to produce those papers All when right. the time comes. Thank you, Pastor mm -hmm. Collins, for that. Go ahead. Thank, um, thank you. Many Nigerians have heard this argument, and it was, and I'm happy that if people on social media are seeing through the certificate issue, that many times people bring up certificates to sort of like throw, um, throw people off the election and the real issues that concern um, the citizens, the Nigerians, the Edo people. It's really not about the certificate. So let's move away from certificate and talk about mm -hmm. the life of the individuals there. And for me, I would go through health. And I don't want us to, I don't want attack. I want a clear, this is what we have done. This is the impact of what we have done. And from the other side, this is what we will do. Mm -hmm. This is how we feel it can be better. Right. So going with that, mm -hmm. um, Pastor Collins, I'd like to start with you. What gaps have your own um, candidate observed in the health sector, just like Tokwe said, that you're going to change or fix when you become governor, if you become governor? Thank you very much. Um, there are uh, a, a lot of gaps that uh, have been observed. As a matter of fact, if you heard the governor speak yesterday, he said that he doesn't need doctors to run the health, care, uh, health sector. And for me, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a scandal. That's scandalous. How can you run a, the health se sector without doctors and nurses? So first and foremost, uh, the, the College of, uh, the School of Nursing that has been shut down, we are going to ensure that within three months of the coming of Pastor Saige Zemo as governor of Edo State, that school will be open because you need that school to feed the health, health, health sector. We are also going to ensure that uh, doctors are employed in, uh, massively because there is a scarcity of doctors across the state. Right now, we have about 20 doctors across the whole of Edo, Edo State. And mm -hmm. that shows you that we are in trouble in the health, health sector. So we are going to ensure that um, the health centers, which Obaseki promised to build, which he did not build, we will build those, those health centers across the 192 wards in Edo State. He promised to build one in every ward, and he built only five. Now we are going to build one ward, one health center per ward in the 192 wards in Edo State after, uh, as soon as um, right. Pastor Ezeamu becomes governor. Okay, let me now we are going to also ensure... Let me now move to the essay because we have very little time. I get the point now. Uh, essay, I would like you to respond to this. Um, what, 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 what has your candidate done so far? And what does he plan to do in addition in the health sector, please? You see, um, they always say that you can't build something or nothing. You see what happened in the debate yesterday was about attacks. And you can see the gentleman or pastor here. He has gone on, on the uh, assault again, you understand? Well, the questions they never ask. You understand? You can't build nothing on something. They, 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 they built their campaign on propaganda and lies. You understand? But they've forgotten that the world has evolved. Years ago, you could only send messages via personal interface. You have to come all the way from Lagos to give a message to your child in Benin. For example, they were going to school. But as time evolved, we now had the email. And now you can do anything you want on the spot at the moment, real time. Mm. They've forgotten that you have Google. You can Google these things. They're all there. The governor promised. They, for them, the health sector means only one thing, the hospital. The hospital, the specialist hospital. That is what matters to them. But they've forgotten that. If you go to the dictionary, check the meaning of specialist. If you have a common cold or you have the snake bite, these are problems that could easily be taken care of at the health centers at the primary health centers, the PHCs, which the governor has informed, which is doing all over the 18 local governments. Which is speak. a lie, which is not but, true. Just, at least I didn't interrupt okay. you, just show some respect. 
Yes, please. Well, let me go. Let me ask my question, sir. So, f first to the no, pastor. Hold on, sir. Sir, my question goes to the pastor. A question, and then the next thing he jumps into is, oh, you, you, you. What are you going to tell us? Tell us what you will do. Now, this is what we have done. We are telling you, go on, go on. I think you, the, the press, please, you have a lot of work to do because the country is in a bad shape. Real bad shit. Essie, I have to pause you for a second because we need to send you more questions. Yeah. Go ahead. So my question is to the pastor. I don't understand mm -hmm. your one uh, one agenda campaign that your that your candidate is proposing. I, I need clarity on that because as an adult citizen and indigenous, I feel that you know that's too bogus. Like you mentioned about the certificate, it's too bogus a campaign. I want specifics on what you will do. Now to the essay to the governor on hospitals. As an adult girl back home. My grandmother does not have access to Google. She needs to access the hospital. And sending money home every time and buying drugs off the chemist is not something that I love doing. It's not convenient. So a primary health care center in EBA, for instance, will do her wonders. If you could just tell me specifically where the primary health care center is that she can access, at least see a doctor to recommend drugs for her, it will make sense. Instead of counting drugs off the counter from every chemist. So those are the specifics that I need. This argument back and forth yeah, is yeah, not what we yeah, need in yeah, a donor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this, uh, for this point that you raised. Now, 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 there's what is called illusion, and there's what is called reality. Oh so when, when the Vasaki camp talks, and we try to refute what they have said, they say we are attacking. The truth of the matter is that you cannot keep pushing lies into, into the space and expect people to swallow the lies who clan and sink up. There are no health centers anywhere. They claim that they have built health centers. They do not exist. So you don't want to go to a pharmacy to buy medication. You want to go to the health center, but no such health center exists. And they are angry when we point that out. Okay. They are asking us to tell them what we want to do. All right. And we say, you have been there for four years. For God's sake, show us what you have Pastor done. Collins. You keep telling us you have done X, Y, Z. Okay. And we say X, Y, Z do not exist. Okay, and Pastor Collins, point, point taken. Let me just give the, um, the essay a few seconds to respond. How many health centers have you built? Good question. How many health centers? There are two people that yeah, the man named Wakers. It's not ahead, called Wakers for nothing. You understand? It is based on performance. There is empirical evidence. You understand? If you go to the state has a website, the governor has a website, you will see everything he has done everywhere. Let me tell you. All for you to go, you. For you to go to you. They do not exist. 192 watts for you as a governor, as a sitting governor to travel, traverse this whole length and breadth of your state and go to each ward. It has never happened before that every single ward in Edo is represented in government. But this is a governor that when he came, he said every ward must have a special assistant. It has never happened before. Yes, well, the the question is, unfortunately, I have to go on a break, so, sir. It's, it's not called work and see for nothing. It is just to go, let you people should do your independent verification. Do not yes. even believe, don't believe what I tell you. Don't believe what it tells you. Okay, all right. I say I have to go on a quick go, break. Go out and find out where these things are. I have to go on a quick break. When we come back, we we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. All right, thanks for staying with us. So we still have the two gentlemen from both parties with us. Yes, Mariam had a question. Yes, yeah, so my question is to Pastor Collins. Um, on the simple agenda that your um, candidate has, he, he talks about um, social welfare and social security numbers for Edo State indigents. It's, I mean, on paper, it's quite um, interesting and laudable. But I would like to know, what are the exact plans for this? Is this a one-year, two-year plan mm -hmm. that will come into fruition within the four years? Or is this something that is long-term? Hmm. Oh, would that be all for four years? All right, thank you. Uh, um, you, can be, you can understand that this is something that is novel, that has not happened before. Um, we're going to have um, each indigent of Edo states um, have a social security number. In other words, this would enable us to know how many uh, citizens we are catering for in every material particular, all right? So that at every particular time, you can know who and who have access to the 
facilities that you're making provision for. If you're building a stadium, if you're building a health center, if you're building um, a school, you want to know how many indigents have access um, to that facility in order to enable you plan well. This is what has not happened before. Now, this also, you can ask me this question now because you have read the simple agenda, which we are in which place we have detailed all our plans. Now, if you ask your Basaki camp, you will find that they, oh there's God. no such document anywhere. They have what they call a mega, I don't know what that means, but you can, you can be sure that you cannot find that document anywhere in existence. All right, so you can ask me about the social security number that we plan to give out now because we have documented it. So you can okay. call us to question. We can, we can, we can give account. This is, right. the, this is the simple agenda, all right, that, that we have brought out. Right. Everybody in the Doe State as of now has access to this okay. document. All right. Now, thank you, so Pastor Collins. Thank account. you for that. I mean, we have, they do not have we have, any we have very little. Yeah. Yeah. They have facts are written out. So you can right. hold them. You, you cannot hold them to anything. Okay. Obasiki did not have this plan Collins, in 2016. We, we, he still does not have now. Oh, so you yes. can anything you ask him okay. now. We we get that, Pastor Pastor Collins. The document, yeah. But I think what's more important for us is let me come to the essay. Um, okay. We've seen, based on what your governor has said yesterday, there an influx of investors coming into Edo since he's been there. According to him, he said about seven flights coming to Edo right now. People are coming in to invest. Could you tell us in a nutshell those things your governor had, has done and plans to build on? In a nutshell, very quickly and very specifically, please. Specific. <laughs> I guess that's for me. Yes. Uh, it's funny when. You come on TV to lie to Nigerians. It's that it tells you how deep we are in this mess that we're in today. <laughs> the man that came on TV yesterday. I know, I mean, the last time the BBC Pigeon English debate, the man was asked the same question that during COVID, how would you fund this your wonderful plan? Like what you're you're to 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 what you're doing. How many billion? And then he comes up to TV to say COVID or no COVID. How do, you, how do you legislate for that? You were asked one question in two different ways. How do you fail one question in two exams, simultaneously? Uh, First one in BBC, he was asked the same question, and yesterday he was asked the same question. Look, this simple agenda is fraudulent. You and I know. Essay, did you and get our own question? Essay, did you get our question? About, he kept on talking about the security vote, the security vote, the vote. He was not talking about the money. Essay, did you get our question? Yeah, that's good, about the money. Good, good. Sorry, I didn't get you. Did you hear our question? Our question is we have very little time and we have people from Edo watching who want to know specifics. What are the things that your um, governor has done specific? And he wants to... We have trained over close to 12,000 teachers. We are okay. building health centers. Yeah. We are opening the landscape up. We are bringing in investors. Before now, before he became governor, there was only one flight coming into Benin. So they are the last count. You have about eight planes on ground every day, daily, flying and out of Benin. But we are, we are doing things the way it's supposed to be done. But these people want to take us all back to where we used to be. And that will never happen. We will never go back to Egypt. OK. Yeah. We won't. OK, yes. Yeah. So SA, um, uh, you have your own mega uh, agenda and one of the things that you your the governor is saying that they'll be working on going forward is revenue generation and we know of course because of the pandemic there's been shortage of revenue you know across the world everywhere but he's talking about taxation in particular and he uses the word a friend pocket friendly way to achieve that can you give us specifically what this uh, method is Okay, let me quickly bring this to your view. Before 2016, hello, can you, are you, can you hear me? We can hear you, but we can't see you, but hello? go ahead. We can hear you very clearly. Before 2016, each box driver and taxi driver in Edo State used to pay 3,000 to 4,000 Naira on a daily basis. Today, they are paying less than 800 Naira. That is pocket friendly. That is what it means by pocket friendly friendly policies. They are not harassed the way they used to be then. We, you know, we don't have people jumping into taxis, into cars, and then causing accidents on the way. You know, we have given revenue collection a human face. Now, coming to uh, uh, what we are trying to bring in, 
the Gelegele seaport is on board. It's coming in. The feasibility studies have been done. And very soon you will see equipment. Some of some of the equipments have started coming in. You know, like the dredging equipment. I am aware that those have started coming in. So, you know, whenever you want, they, they call it MOU because they don't know what to do a transaction on this. What they do know is collect money, just pick money, pick money, money will come from Abuja. But no money is coming from Abuja. And then we thank God, if you look, the COVID pandemic has come to reset how we do things. With COVID, it was out yesterday. How do you, why would you raise money? He couldn't talk about it. You just think the money sitting there in Abuja, that the uh, prices are all plummeted, they're all down. So where it's, is this money really going to come from? So you need someone that has been able to drive a business. Okay. Because politics has become serious business. All right. Thank you. Unfortunately, Thank you we are running out of time, sir. Let me come to Pastor Collins uh, uh, on this. Uh, Pastor Collins, mm. we have very little time left. And I'd like you to, in a nutshell, um, the strategy your, your candidate plans to have. Because people have said in different quarters that they've been seeing some kind of improvement. But especially since your own candidate was, in, was an SSG at some point, can you honestly tell us there haven't been any improvements? And if there haven't been, what exactly are the specific areas you're going to primarily invest in when you become um, governor, when you go into government? It should answer as a pastor. Since he says he's a pastor, it should answer well. You say the truth and nothing but the truth. I wonder, I wonder why my friend is uh, bothered because he knows that now what I'm going to say will bring out the lie that they have been telling. They tell lies. It says to you that they have trained 12,000 teachers. And then you want to ask them, where are the 12,000 teachers? And in any case, how much did it cost to train the 12,000 teachers? They don't exist anywhere. Obaseki is just an MOU. I mean, all it does, it, it says, it tells you that Lagos State came to copy a best. And then you would uh, ask him, what did they Lagos State copy? They copied what they saw on uh, computer, all right? It's not on ground. I can tell you very um, lucidly that what we are going to do is all encapsulated in the simple agenda, all right? From A to Z, everything that we will do. So in other words, this is a government that's going to be held accountable, all right, to the people. And, and, and everything that we're talking about is going to be time bound, all right? Because it's a smart document, this one. The smart document means the time, the T there means it's time bound. All right, and I can assure you that we are not going to be a government of propaganda. We are going to hit the ground running. Osage Zayamu Pastor has been in a do state, I mean, for, for as long as you can remember. So he knows everything about this state. It's not like God who came from Lagos. He's right. it's it's a stranger to a do state. All right, wow. we know what to do. We will hit the ground running. Okay, we, will, we have we will to run. Affect adult people mm -hmm. within three months of the existence of mm -hmm. Osage Zayamu government. And Thank you very much, Pastor Collins. You. As like, I give like, you, as I show you this simple agenda. Unfortunately, we have to run at to, this time. You can look at the, okay. the promises. Pastor that Collins, I'm Nigerians are used to seeing agendas. We, yeah, we've been seeing they, it forever. I mean, we, we've seen top, top of the size of this agenda thing. Because we've we seen it. Just so you, we want to, I'm not sure I got clarity. I don't know if you guys got clarity in both from both. Both gentlemen, I'm not sure I got clarity. Right Either way, we have to wrap up. Indeed, SA, uh, uh, we have, thank you very much, um, Pastor Collins, for joining us. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. Also, the special advisor to Governor Baseki, Osai Bovo Ihoha Iyoha. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us this morning. Um, Nigerians will be one to decide if they got any clarity um, in this conversation. But it seems that there's still a lot of mudslinging going on. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we need, we need specifics, uh, but, I, but hey, listen, I'm not voting in a do. Uh, uh, <laughs> Most people are Nima voting there. people are the ones voting. My in-laws are voting yeah, there. So we only wish them the best My this Saturday. My in-laws are voting there. We only wish them the best and hope that the best candidate wins. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.